Now, of all the fish we have in the Great Lakes, a tremendous variety of fish, we're going to be talking right now about steelhead trout. Now, this is a steelhead. lives down in the depths in the Great Lakes most of the time. You notice it has that pink stripe down its side. Well, it's like a rainbow trout. It would be a rainbow trout if this fish stayed in the stream all its life. Now, the rainbows that come down the rivers into the Great Lakes, they eat an awful lot. They get very large, and we call them steelhead trout. They go back into the streams to spawn. Now, some of the fish, even though the spawning run is in the spring, some of the fish have returned already in the fall, early, and they, they can be caught now. Now, some of the best streams, here we have the St. Joe River. Some people say this could be the best steelhead stream in the state, all the way up to Berrien Springs Dam. Oh, the Muskegon River up to Nuego is a good place to catch steelhead. Uh, moving up here, the Pear Marquette is another good one. Uh, the Betsy River on both sides of US 131 is, us is usually open during these frigid winter temperatures. The Platte, of course, uh, especially from Platte Lake down to Lake Michigan at this time of year. Now, moving over to the east side of the state, we can go to Sheboygan. You can catch steelhead up to the dam in town. Moving over here to Thunder Bay, Alpena, you can also catch them Thunder Bay River up to the dam in town. Now, moving down to Oscoda, the Osabo River, famous trout stream, good steelhead fishing all the way up to Foot Dam. These are just some of the good steelhead streams. Right now, let's find out what it's like to go steelhead fishing in the winter. You wouldn't think that there'd be any fishermen who were so enthusiastic about their sport that they'd brave the wind and sleet and snow just to fish. But there are a few. Now, the two dedicated fishermen that I fished with on this blustery winter day were John Hesse and Jim Bedford, both steelhead fishing experts from Lansing. Now, what do you wear on a day like this? Well, I'll tell you what I wore. I wore three pairs of socks, a pair of fishnet long johns, covered with a pair of waffle weave long johns, a pair of corduroys over that, then my waders. Up top, it was a fishnet shirt, covered with a long-sleeved waffle weave undershirt, then a flannel shirt, a sweatshirt, an old ski sweater on top of that, and a good warm jacket with a hood. I used a knit hat to keep my ears warm, a pair of knit gloves, a pair of spare mittens, and a scarf. Believe me, I wasn't overdressed. I was comfortable, though. A 15-minute hike through the snow finally brought us to the banks of our steelhead stream. Now, this is a favorite of Jim's and John's, so I'm not going to, you know, reveal exactly where we are right now. I've told you a few of the better steelhead streams in the state, so pick from those. Now, both Jim and John are spinner fishermen. They use spinner lures that flash as they're retrieved, imitating silvery minnows that dash and dart in the current. Now, John prefers using a closed-faced spinning reel and no gloves if it's warm enough. Of course, it's really never warm in January, but he prefers the feel of not wearing gloves, having more control sensitivity in his hands. Now, Jim Bedford, on the other hand, prefers an open-faced spinning reel, and he almost never wears gloves, even in the most frigid weather. Now, if that isn't the sign of a die-hard steelhead fisherman, I don't know what is. You know, there are fish to be caught in these frigid waters. It's not only exciting sport, but it really is a beautiful time of year as long as you're dressed to enjoy it, especially in the middle of the winter. And fishing in the middle of the winter is popular outdoor sport in Michigan, even though most fishermen do it through the ice, usually on an inland lake on the Great Lakes or Grand Traverse Bay, Saginaw Bays are popular spots. But stream fishing, using the fall and spring fishing techniques, can be very productive if the streams aren't frozen over. Right here, John Hesse is sliding over shelf ice. That's ice that's attached to the shore and extends partway into the river. If the shelf ice is fairly thick, no problem. But you never know if that shelf ice is going to support your weight or dump you in. That's one reason it's always a good idea to fish with a pal. This type of fishing is just like you do in the fall or spring, slowly wading upstream, casting towards the submerged logs and brush, bringing your lure by the pockets and eddies and behind rocks and in the deeper holes where those steelhead are lurking. Now, fish don't like to expend a lot of energy battling the current if it isn't necessary, especially in the winter when their metabolism is lower. So they'll be behind obstructions out of the fast-moving current. And in this cold water, steelhead just won't go too far to hit a lure. You have to work the lures in close to where they lie if you want to entice them into taking a crack at your lure. Now, in this river, you can see where the water levels have receded over the past few weeks. 
Ice had formed around this clump of trees midstream, and as the water levels fell, new ice formed at a lower level. This handiwork of nature really is intricate and beautiful. In the winter, it's just like walking through Mother Nature's art gallery, and that's, I guess, one side benefit of winter fishing. Not many people get out to these streams to see the wildlife and ice formations, and, of course, that's another benefit, the solitude. Every now and then you'll see the remains of a coho or Chinook salmon that has completed its life cycle and is naturally dis decaying there on the stream bottom. Salmon only live to be three or four years old and it's their destiny to die after spawning. But steelhead, which are found in the same rivers and streams where you find salmon, don't die after spawning. If they're lucky, they'll be back several years in a row to spawn. And they're an exciting fish to catch. Steelhead are an unusual fish in that they're basically a rainbow trout, but for some reason this strain of rainbow trout migrates to the Great Lakes, just like the salmon. And like the salmon, they grow to five, maybe ten pounds before returning to their home stream to spawn. But unlike salmon, they don't die after spawning, and unlike salmon, they usually spawn in the spring, not in the fall. But for some reason, about 20 or 30 percent maybe of the steelhead come up the spawning streams in the fall and they spend the winter here waiting for the waters to warm in March and April. That will trigger their spawning activity. Maybe you've heard that salmon and steelhead trout don't eat while they're, while they're in the streams on their spawning runs. Well, that's correct most of the time. You'll rarely find a steelhead trout with food in its stomach while it's in a river. But the logical question is, why do they hit a lure? Well, who knows? Fisheries biologists are as baffled by this as anyone. It appears that they strike because they're aggravated by an intruding fish, even if it looks like a small one. They don't really intend to eat it. But then why will they also pick up spawn bags or eggs or other natural baits? Well, who knows? Evidently, it's just a bad habit they got into in the days when they used to be hungry. And in any case, even though they are feeding while they're in the streams or aren't feeding, they will hit lures and baits, and that's good enough for most fishermen. Well, I hope all this doesn't look too easy. There are problems with winter fishing. Here we have Jim snagged in the brush, but he's been snagged in the brush so many times he doesn't lose patience. He knows how to work it loose. But he also knows this river like the back of his hand, and he knows where most of the snags are. And of course, his casting technique is a highly polished art. Now, John Hesse is aware of the hazards of shelf ice as he walks towards the bank. Look at that on the lower left. Frozen guides on your fishing rod are another difficulty, especially on the colder days when they might ice up after only two or three casts. There's really only one way to solve this. Put the guide in your mouth and melt the ice. Seems to be the quickest and most efficient way, especially on the smaller guides. The largest guides, it's relatively simple to break the ice out with your fingers. Now you can also use your mouth to hold spare parts for your reel if you need to stop streamside and make a few repairs. John had a little difficulty with his reel freezing up. But you can tell he's an experienced fisherman because he carries spare parts along with the tools he needs to make the repairs. Now here's an age-old problem to fishermen. You've hooked the bottom. Now, if you play it just right, you might be able to pull loose and get your lure back. On the other hand, it might be a lost cause, you never know. So here's a rare shot coming up. You're going to see a fisherman whose lure is snagged on the bottom while his waders are snagged in a tree. you got to hand it to Jim Bedford. In weather like this, he still doesn't lose his cool, even though he loses his lure. But with Jim, and John for that matter, there are a lot more lures where that came from. 
both fellows are serious spinner fishermen. They lose a lot of spinners in the brush, so they buy the components in large quantities to make their own spinners for only a fraction of what they'd pay if they bought their spinners packaged. Jim and John both keep meticulous records of their fishing trips. Last year, Jim Bedford logged over 250 hours. That's in the water fishing for steelhead. He caught 66. Well, that's a darn good average, as good as you'll find anywhere. And right now, you're watching exactly how he does it. Well, now the score is two to one. Jim Bedford has two steelhead on his stringer. John Hesse has one. But before Jim could get his line back in the water, there was a cry of fish on, and now John has his hands full. Well, it could have been that Jim's hands were cold. His first netting attempt came up empty, but a second try netted a beautiful steelhead that any fisherman would be proud to take home. Now, this particular day did turn rather cold. When we got into the stream at 8.30 in the morning, the temperature was close to 30 degrees, but during the day, we saw two or three inches of snow fall. We felt the winds kick up, and by four in the afternoon, the temperature was only 10 degrees. We decided we'd had enough for one day on the river. But we did have five nice steelhead to show for the effort. Now, I know you only see four here, but John caught a fifth one just before we left, and it just so happened that this photographer had put his camera in the car before that fifth one was caught. But as I recall, and I think Jim will bear out that it was a huge one.